Hey there. Hey, you said we're in I, our head today? We're in our head today. Are you feeling that? Nice. I like being in my head, though. <laughs> well, yeah, that's because you're a Libra. Yeah, yeah. So how's, how's things going over there? Maya Khan. Oh, you're back. <clears throat> yeah, we're back at Maya Khan for a bit. I, I was, as soon as we got in here and uh, I was thinking about you and because uh, this, uh, this is where we were hanging out in June. Right, yeah. How long are you there? Just for a couple of days. We're just getting ready to go back to Canada. We're like winding down. I'm feeling too, because I get here and you know when you get here, it's like a castle of Maya Khan. It's like everything slows down. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I got to do a live? Oh, my God. How am I going to do that? Right. You get up. It's like you get up out of that reality, and then you come back to this digital reality. And there's a jarring sensation there. I feel that as well, especially, like, being surrounded in nature. Those, I mean, that's a different, that's a different energy. That's a different world, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it really is. And... And my body, my body knows what to expect because this is, a, I guess, the fourth time I've been here or fifth time. <clears throat> so my body knows what to expect this time. So it's already going into power down mode. It's going into uh, cleaning mode. And uh, it's, it's just it's mind blowing how fast and how much my body remembers from, from being here last time. The body definitely remembers. It's almost like it gets plugged back in. And yeah. I noticed that when you go on vacation, you go out of town. Um, if I go on a road trip, for instance, I feel one way. And then almost like soon as you cross the county line on the way back, it's like you, you get plugged back into the matrix and you start to feel all of the thoughts and the emotions and the distractions and the anxieties of home, <laughs> of work life. So, uh, witchy kind of woman official asked, where did your mustache go? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm letting it go now. I did, I had it for five years. It was down somewhere around here with my, all my face hair. I don't shave anything. So I just don't grow any hair on the sides of my face, but I got over that chapter. So now I'm, I'm shaving. I'm experimenting with shaving, seeing how it feels. Don't know if I'll do that forever. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because uh, uh, I don't want to keep, I, I guess I do want to keep going back to the urine topic because uh, it's so polarizing, man. Like uh, we had about 8,000 people say, hey, if you're, I love everything you're doing, but this one topic, if you don't change the topic, I'm going to, I'm going to leave. And I'm like, really? You love everything we're doing, but one topic. I mean, it must be all be millennials, I think. <laughs> yeah, well they're just they're just not going the same speed on all of the on all the topics so that's where being open right if there's if there's if there's an open mind then you can also handle somebody else doing something you don't agree with and just witness it somebody asked, since we're on the uti topic uh urine therapy topic yes it's it's good to drink even if it's cloudy it's going back into your system giving information what your body needs to help and clear out um, I had uh, I had um, um, certified health nut. Oh, Troy! I had Troy on here uh, the other day too because we we wanted to clear up some of that. I mean, he's an expert. He's been doing it for twenty five years, so I want to clear up some of the uh, some of the mess, right? And uh, and that guy has a lot of information on it. I mean, he really does. And he was one of the things he was talking about was uh, he was talking about aging it. And and it goes from a hundred billion stem. Uh, it goes from a, from a uh, sorry from a hundred million stem cells to a hundred billion stem cells when you age it for seven days. When you what for seven days? When you age it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it starts to grow ormus too. Ormus gold, like ormus gold, right? Ormus yeah. mineral. So, wow. it starts to like crystallize in there and yeah troy ages it he's got bottles underneath his bed and he <laughs> well, sometimes we'll go to the beach and i'll bring this little canister um and it's just aged urine and we're we're at the beach and he's 
Um, like I do this thing with the sand where I rub it all over my, my skin, but then he then follows up with taking the urine and he's rubbing it all over himself. <laughs> yeah. so you're, not only that, you're not only that friend who drinks their pee, you're the friend that rubs it all over themselves. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's I got washed my hair with it and, and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. You bathe in it. Yeah, we've got a lot of traction. That, that, that whole topic is getting traction, which, you know, I was really grateful for because it's basically, it's polarizing people. And if it's polarizing people, it's making them think. And at the end of it, our job is to make them think. It's the, it's the same thing as the amniotic fluid, right? When we're in the womb, we're peeing and, and drinking that in the womb for nine months. Well, the digestive system's not really formed for the full nine months, but while it's when it's formed, we're cycling our own urine in our in our mother's womb as well. Yes, yeah, somebody a, uh, Starfire Harmonics said, "I resonate with Dr. Morse's perspective on drinking urine." I'm guessing that he probably is not. I don't know what his perspective is, but still enjoy listening and tuning in to Migraj. And I mean, there's a rational response. It's like, it's like, um, I don't, I don't want everybody to believe everything I believe. And I don't want them to think though everything that I think I want them to test and come to their own reality, which we're going to be talking about today, because if they don't, then nothing moves forward in this world. Right. And so if people think urine is a waste product, then we shouldn't drink it. I mean, I, I correlate everything with everything, right? So uh because everything's essentially a holo a hologram right so there's different parts and aspects that replicate in all aspects of life and so urine would be equivalent to waste according to most people but it doesn't mean that it doesn't get like it doesn't have information in it right like you said it's got the information of what our body needs but it's the same thing like if we get into an argument or we blow up emotionally we could also consider that similar to urine like it's 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 being expelled out of us okay but if we no, go so back and we digest that and we digest what we just explode or expelled out of us that also has information and we can tune ourselves based on that information it's very beneficial you know what less than uh, 10 percent of our toxins get expelled by urine by the way 70% of our toxins are expelled by our breath. That's, I, this, this is what people are missing. And then, and then 20% by sweat and defecation, and then only 10% by our urine. So it's like, it, you, you'd, be, you'd be more careful about what you breathe than, right. than what, you, what you drink. I heard it's even lower percentage than that, but yeah, it's somewhere around there. And yeah. fat actually comes out through our lungs as well um yeah absolutely that's why most breathwork teachers like the people that are doing it every single day for multiple sessions they're all they're all like they don't really i mean some of them exercise but a lot of them it's not in the exercise that makes their body lean it's the breath work because the lungs are what's expelling the fat you know what I keep showing this, but it's getting busy now, right? I'm doing, on an average, 30 minutes a day worth of fascial maneuvers and breathing. That's it. And, and based on our current where we are, I haven't been able to get in nature much or move much or anything like that. I, you know, I get out to the ocean, get in the water for about 10, 15 minutes, but that's it. And, and it's, it, it is now, it's starting to to pick up it's the breath work that's doing this it's the breath work and the movement that's actually doing this not not the working out right i'm the same way i was i was paying 330 dollars a month for equinox membership i got introduced to fashion maneuvers and i quit going to equinox i like <laughs> but i'm still in a year contract so i still have to keep on paying um so, 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 so hold day, on. we gotta, we got to put that up as a commercial I paid three hundred thirty dollars a month to go to Equinox. I no longer go to Equinox. Equinox is a fashion maneuver. <laughs> yeah, but I still had to keep on paying. So every day it was a struggle. It was like, do I go take a yoga class or do I just do these maneuvers? 
And I was like, I'm paying for the old class. It's already paid for. And then I would still just do the fascial maneuvers. And uh, yeah, so it just makes me feel better. And I've noticed the same thing, like muscle growth, fat loss. I look healthier. I feel like just walking around healthier. And you know, what's interesting is in the very beginning, when I would be watching your guys' videos, you guys would be talking about your ears popping and all of this stuff. And I wasn't getting any of that in the very, very beginning. You're like, say what you're feeling and that's important. I'd be like, yeah, but I don't, I, there's <laughs> nothing to say. <laughs> but then after a few months, I'm getting, I'm getting all of that now. Feeling, yeah. <clears throat> and even during the day, I feel like it, things get released when I'm not doing the maneuvers, and, but I know it's correlated to it. So do you have a, do you have a, an idea? Have you built a story or a narrative around in your head about why that happens? Have you put a theory? I mean, it feels, it feels like pressure, but I don't know. I don't have, I don't have anything that I can verbalize right yeah. now for you. But yeah, it's, it's pressures in the layers, pressures in the layers of fascia. And as a, as we do this, the, the layers open up and eventually when they open up, you know, as you move around, then they can fully open up and then that's when they start to fill with fluid and stuff like that. It's like when you go like up a mountain or down a mountain in a car where you're going up to like 6,000 feet and or you're coming down and your ears pop and you don't realize there was pressure there. But when it pops, you feel that that release. Um, it's like that, but in the body. Like in, in the tissue, I feel that popping and it feels like, oh, I didn't realize, realize there was pressure there, but it just got released. And yeah, it just feels really good. So what are you, um, out of curiosity, what are you seeing out there? I mean, you're putting on your, you put, you're putting on your podcast, you're, uh, you're always creating new content. What what are you seeing from people out there right now? Where are they at? Like, did you get any sense for where the world's sitting right now? Well, one thing's for sure that people are becoming more aware of their own locus, inner locus of control. So at least the people in my world, in my reality, are a lot of them are opening up to like, honing in on what what they feel and not relying so much on the media and then you have the media which is struggling and pulling all the strings to try and remain their like get their control but because of that we have youtube instagram TikTok, where the people are all learning from each other and that's a major shift from 10 years ago 20 years ago where you needed a whole media studio, you needed the backing of some corporate agencies in order to have influence in the world. But right now, anybody can have influence, which is good because we're all being influenced massively by regular people. Regular meaning just people, people of our choice, people of our choosing, and also the opposing, right? We know that people are getting stuff in their feed that they don't necessarily agree with because of all the arguments and the comments. So it's not like the algorithms are only feeding people stuff that's going to resonate with them. They're also feeding people the opposite because that's actually what makes them engage, which is good. That's a good balance for all of us to see things that we don't agree with and that we do agree with. And I think that that's, going, that's a major shift on the planet that we're all it's it's almost like a thought collaboration all over the globe <clears throat> so does that does that um does that mean you do you find yourself answering more of those type of questions for people like the basic ones about consciousness or about the science or about history and stuff like that so i i used to send a message to every single person that followed me like a welcome message. It went out to like 50,000 people. Uh, it does, I don't do it anymore. But then I would spend two to three hours a day just answer. And in that welcome message, it was like I was prompting them to let me know what's going on in their life, if they have any questions. And, and I was two to three hours a day, I was answering people's messages. And what I was getting over the last two to four years is that 
and like an insane amount of people were saying like, I'm just waking up. Like I'm just becoming aware. I just became conscious. I just got into meditation. I just got, got into whatever practice that they are allowing themselves to know themselves more. And I think that's, that stuff's always been around, right? There's been self-development seminars. There's been, there's been consciousness schools, but they've been kind of on the outskirts of reality. And I think that it's becoming more mainstream where you can get on here and talk about drinking your urine. And it's not like pe some people have heard of it. Some people haven't, but it's like people are willing to engage and be, you know, receptive, even if it's just watching and disagreeing with it, but you're not, you're not, we're not, <clears throat> It's still accepted. If people are engaging with you, it's accepted. Otherwise, they just turn off or swipe up, and you you'd be done for them. You'd be, they'd be that's, gone. A, that's a that's a good point. The fact that they're still arguing or sending you messages means that somehow, some way, in some part of them, they 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 want more information. They want to be. They want they want to learn more. They want yeah. to experience. Yeah. They're still a fan. There's a there's just like a. I feel as the human species, we still get to figure out how to sync up more than we are now, because there's still a lot of noticing the differences as opposed to noticing the similarities. And I think that's where the work is, is recognizing ourself in others so that we start treating others as if they are ourself. And that's where we actually can collaborate as one human network if we realize that there's an interconnectedness between us all and that's where our power is. How do you do that? I mean, you, you, have, you have one of the most um, calm uh, responses to stimulus, even if it's negative of anybody I know. So how do, you, like, how do you actually do that? Do you get stuff that gets underneath your skin still? um yeah but i can't think of anything right now but it happens every few years and it's always <laughs> i mean i'm a couple times a day <laughs> I, I and and it's uh it's always surprising to me and it's and it and it like it's like a some something inside me is raising its hand up and saying like hey pay, pay attention to me because I'm fe like, like, that's what I, when I feel things, I talk and wheeze a lot um, when I'm teaching. So it, it may seem to others, I, I try to, because I, a lot of people are dealing with anxiety and depression. So I, I, I put myself in their shoes a lot, but I personally, if I were to be truthful, barely ever experienced that. I feel like I did though, when I was younger, I was at war with, with everybody. I would be sitting in a room every single day of my life and just imagining like what if everybody in here wanted to attack me how would i get out how would i you know could i beat or kill everybody in this room so my brain's been on the opposite side of the spectrum before in my life but right now i've really learned that as a creator our thoughts and our emotions are manifesting reality and so i i know that and I have the luxury of knowing that if I feel a certain way that I can link that with how my reality gets created. So I just make a choice to see things and perceive things differently so that I get to experience reality in a blissful state. It doesn't mean I'm ignorant. Um, I do recognize things that are challenges and are stressful but the struggle's not there. The resistance isn't there. When you do get resistance though, what do you do? Like, what is your process? So uh, we talked a little bit about it the other day or the other week, but most of it is coming back to the breath and directing the breath into certain parts of my body and just feeling my feet. So it's basically going back to myself as earth. Because I have faith, I have a gnosis that I'm a cell of the earth. 
So if something's jarring me off, that's basically me going, it's focusing in on me as an individual separate from earth. And when I'm separate from earth, I'm like a leaf on a tree and I'm fighting with another leaf, right? Not realizing that I'm the tree. And so in order to get out of that zone, I bring myself back to the perception of the tree. And the way that I do that is I, I basically, it's all imagination. And for me, imagination is reality. So I imagine my feet, my hips rooted into the earth and the breath is like the universe coming into me. And I fill up my belly, I fill up my heart, I fill up my heart more. And just a few breaths where I'm expanding my rib cage and, and feeling my, my heart open up, it, it, it goes away. Like it's almost like a bubble gets created around me, but it's the opposite of a bubble. I'm not, I'm not um, separating myself. It's, it's like I'm diffusing back into my nature. Well, you know, you're, you're a Libra and Libra is ruled by the lungs. So basically you're saying you come back to yourself, which is your lungs. Right. And that really works for me particularly. And I, and I never thought about that. So thank you, because that means it's not necessarily going to work the same for everybody. Well, yeah, you get, you get a lot of, you know, like you get, I'm an Aries ego. And, you know, I like, I have strong views, but they're loosely held. Like, I believe, I, I believe, I that. believe, but if, but if somebody presents information, and sometimes it needs to be a little loud. Sometimes somebody needs to yell at me and I'm like, I go back, I think about it, I come back. That's, a, that's my airy side. My Sagittarius side is, I believe what I believe and I'm not going to hear anything else. So the airy side is more willing to talk. But then I have the Virgo in me that, that, that takes all of the information and, and says, does this make sense in my body or my life? So, so we all do it slightly differently. I noticed that air signs, you know, like Jason has a lot of Aquarius in him. So he can actually be in a situation where he, where he comes up and he's wrong or he's not at his best, let's say. And then he can observe it in the situation, change his energy and demeanor and come back at it. For me, I got to go take a walk, get in the ocean, all those things first. So... I think maybe some of it has to do with me being a Libra and being able to balance the perspective. I also feel that because I coached classes six to eight hours, six to eight sessions a day for close to 10 years when I owned gyms, when I was teaching, what I, what, if I had 15 to 20 to 30 people in front of me, I would really have to put my awareness into them. And so I was practicing for 10 years of all of my thoughts, my words being received. It was like I would put my consciousness into my students so that I knew how they were receiving my words. And then I would adjust my words based on what I felt, they, how they were hearing me, how they were able to receive it, how they were able to comprehend it. So I did a lot of practice of practicing practicing. And I'm just really realizing this right now in this conversation that I had a lot of practice of of like observing myself as another person. And so right. it's, it's it's like I'm skilled at doing that. And so somebody made a comment about even if somebody is shouting hateful things at you, you can just be OK. And the thing is, is that there is if that person was shouting hateful things in another language and I had no awareness that they were hateful, it would be impossible for me to get angry or anxious. It's only because we make meaning out of another person's words that we develop anger and anxiety from within us. That chemical cocktail, those thoughts, those emotions that go radiating through your body when you're anxious, when you're anger, it doesn't come from outside. It all gets built within ourself, which means that it's for us to go into the equation of it and resolve it. And what a lot of people do is they feel the cause of their inner turmoil came from somebody else, but it didn't. So they're seeking the answer in an apology from somebody else. They're seeking the answer in hurting that other person or being vindictive back to that person because they feel that that's the source 
of what they're <laughs> feeling inside. But the source doesn't come from outside. All of that came and was developed from within you because you chose the meaning of the event, no matter what it is. And it can be things that are hurtful. Like people think we're humans, we're bumping into each other. Accidents are happening. Sometimes they're not accidents, but <clears throat> sometimes somebody needs to make a choice. It's feed their family or feed your family. They're going to choose feed their family and they might screw you over in the process and you're going to make meaning of that. And the question is, where do you put responsibility? If you have an ability to respond, you're going to respond internally as opposed to try to make the responsibility on somebody else where you want them to respond in a certain way. And that's never going to fill the void. It's never going to resolve anything because they didn't cause any of the feelings or the emotions that are within you. You did. So somebody said, I disagree with the thought of someone shouting, you pick up the energy that's being transmitted. It's not just the words, but what we were speaking to, yeah, if someone's angry, you're going to feel the anger, but it's, but it's more specific if I go to, I'm angry at you because you are an asshole or because of whatever. Someone's angry, it's like, I don't know what's up with them. But if, if all of a sudden I feel personally drawn in by the words and that's what you're saying, I made meaning of those actual words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and can we discover, so back to what I do, my personal process is back to like, instead of the meaning for me what's uh what's the alternative like everybody does what they feel is is correct not a single action on this planet happens because somebody thinks this is the wrong thing to do and everybody's doing what they feel is most correct from their perspective and like i said we're all bumping into each other and so if somebody's most correct their agenda is against your agenda then you're going to feel a certain way. But are you able to perceive their agenda? Because if you're able to perceive their agenda, they're doing this for some other reason that isn't just to harm you, because that's really how we receive it. They're harming me, they're harming me. That's, that's all we really have the default ability to perceive. But are we able to position our consciousness within their field and see what why they're making that decision because in business and negotiating gary you know this you don't come to the table just telling the other person what you need you have to understand what they need and the whole deal gets negotiated because you're helping them resolve their needs and in the process you get your needs resolved yeah absolutely i mean i mean that that is it it's it's about understanding the other person and sometimes those words get in the way because I have made meaning to them. I find that a lot when I'm dealing with culture. Like, uh, you know, certain cultures, it's about respect or it's about a deal. Like, like I, I grew up in Vancouver. <clears throat> That's a Vancouver uh, version of China. So, and, and you've got Cantonese there who, who it's about the money and the deal, right? But if you get the Japanese, it's about the pride and the honor. And so a lot of the discussions come in from a very different cultural place. Um, you got a lot of Eastern Europeans, it's about the respect, right? And, and so, or, or there are some cultures that are self-deprecating. And, and so they, they use those words based upon their cultural beliefs, which can be very hard if I'm not, if I don't have a capacity to, to, to truly understand somebody, to truly get in their shoes ask more questions and I'm not going to get it. And this is where, you know, I've been working on this Rob, because I like to move, I move fast. And then when I'm moving fast and I'm talking and I'm in, and I'm in a vision or going in a direction, um, when I'm going that direction, I don't want to hear anything. When I stop, I'll listen. But when I'm, when I'm driving the car, like, don't tell me I'm going the wrong way when I'm already, when I've already pointed and shot the arrow, it's no, it's no good when it's left the quiver or left the, uh, the bolt. And, and, and what I've been learning to do by watching people like you is to, is to stop and put space between me, those words, and my reaction 
so that I can get more information because that's what I'm lacking. If I'm upset, it's, it's, it's almost always information. There's a, yeah, there's a concept of just not making a decision or not reacting for 24 hours. And if that's too much for you, then do 24 minutes. And if that's too much for you, even 24 seconds is going to be enough to buffer that, that immediate reaction and, and you can breathe through it. And there's a little bit more absorption um, of life's events. If you can just learn to witness without even the words, right? Like you said, the words get in the way. If you just learn to witness what is, because the fact of the matter is everything's happening as it's happening. And from my perspective, it's happening perfectly as it should. Otherwise, it wouldn't be happening. Every event is happening perfectly as it should. Otherwise, it wouldn't be happening. So for me, underneath that gnosis, I am contradicting my truth if I think that something is wrong. And that is, that's just how I operate. Everything is, it's, it, I would even say it's just, it just, it's happening. So even the label of perfect is a little bit off, off truth, but it just, it, it is happening. And what are we going to do with it? You, you brought up something interesting with the cultures though. Yeah. Like Germans, it needs to be right. It needs to be correct. Latin, like South America, Central America, family, right? So the yeah. words that we choose when we're speaking to these certain cultures or the direction that we're going, they're going to be able to receive it. And we can start hearing that in other people. If they start saying, uh, if they start using words that are visual, then you want to be speaking to them in a way about how certain things look. Right. Or if they start talking about how it feels or how they felt, you start hearing words like um, uh, audible words. Like if they start, if they, if anything comes up where they talk about a sound, for me, that's like a trigger. So I've got certain triggers to read people. Um, the senses are one. Right. So if, if you say like, hey, you just went to Jamaica, how, how was it? And they start talking about the beauty of the sights. I know that person's a visual thinker, learner, they feel in vision. And so if I'm selling them on an idea or I'm, I want something to penetrate into them, then I, I speak about words. But then there's also like the personality types, right? Some people want to win. Some people want money. Some people want communities and friendship and, and fun. And some people, what matters most to them is service. And so listening to that as well allows you to be a better communicator so that people are receptive. And as somebody like you and I, Gary, where we're just talking to a broad audience of people, we also get to figure out how we can incorporate all of this stuff into our message so that it's hitting mm -hmm. all the people out there. And that's what we get to do. If you guys aren't aware, as creators, like these things are all important to us or business owners, some of you guys are CEOs, you all, you all know this already. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, th that's the other thing too, it's having the experience by talking to broad audiences or narrow audiences, by talking to people and getting reflections. One of the things that I get the opportunity and you get the opportunity to do is see yourself on film. So there's people that can communicate but have never seen themselves on film. And then when you show them on film, they go, oh, that's why I'm like that. That's that's why this works, or this this is why that happens. Mm -hmm. Watching yourself on film can be difficult. Um, <laughs> the first yeah. few times I videotaped myself, it was very. I mean, it was many years ago. It was when I owned the gyms. I was like, I'm going to start videotaping my lectures because I used to lecture in the gym with the whiteboard and talk about things. I'm going to start videotaping my lectures, and man, it was very difficult to hear how many times I said, "Uh." Or how yeah. many times I stared at the ceiling or, or like my posture went kind of lazy. And I, and I do this thing also where I kind of have fun with me being like making a mistake. And that's, that's something recent. That's actually what I'm dealing with now is like being okay with me not being precise. Um, but, uh, 
I went to a, a dentist and she was doing x-rays on my mouth, which I hate. Um, and she kept on making mistakes. And when she made a mistake, she was doing what I do, which is kind of like playing it off and laughing it off. And I was like, yo, you're putting radiation into my entire body and you keep on having to redo this over and over because you keep on making mistakes. And it, it was like, okay, well, this is how my audiences are perceiving me when I, when I just kind of laugh off that I wasn't prepared to give this talk. And so that really taught me <laughs> to, <laughs> to not, to, to basically be aware of that. I had yeah. to go through getting radiated, like literally yeah. she had to take like five different times to do one thing because she kept on messing up and just be like, oh, oh, whoa, silly me, that is I messed up again. That is, that is hilarious. So, uh, so the, this uh, um, uh, given this 31 says, can it be dangerous manipulating people with all this? And I have one thing to say about that. Um, I've learned that all of these techniques and skills, they, they, they only work to a point and then the true emotion or the true intent comes through. And, um, and the other thing too is I find that until people are, have the ability to see if something is manipulating or not or good or not, they don't learn the skill. You can give it to them all day long. I've, I mean, I've had 20,000 employees. I've trained, I don't know, five or 6,000 salespeople. No, no, probably 10,000 salespeople in my life. And I find that the ones who get it are the ones who have discernment or can discern. Because you're right. I mean, what we're trying to do is communicate. And it's not manipulate, it's communicate. And if I communicate and you agree or it feels good, you're going to have a response. And, and, I'm, and that's what we want. We want the communication response. What do you say to that? So all, all business is relationship, right? So the better that you can communicate, the better that you can relate to other people, see things from their perspective and develop a win-win situation. It's not like sports or like, like what, how we are taught. In, in business, it's, it's the real world. It's not, what we learn in school is not the real world. So the only way that negotiations happen is if everybody feels win-win. And in magic, so the way that I define magic is that well there's many definitions but in magic i'm not going to go into my definition but there's in magic there's Abracadabra. white magic yeah there's that but uh there's white magic which is essentially like good like you you are are desiring the benefit of all and then there's black magic which is you, you're basically hurting another taking advantage and the thing is, like, if you think about, like, what a, I'm not going to go into witches, but I'll go back to the point I'm trying to make, which is, oh, if you're wait, trying, wait. oh, you just went into witches. <laughs> I'm going to go back to that point of trying to make All right. witches. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to say what I was going to say about witches. Witches are, but um, if you're going to rape reality, then you're raping yourself. And yeah. that's what I, because I got into all of this manipulating reality in the seduction world when I was 18, 19 years old. That was my entrance into meditation, into manipulating reality, into going into the earth in people's dreams and, and, and popping up in their consciousness. It was all within the world of seduction. And what I learned is that to, to be of benefit to people, to not rape them even if it was mentally or on a on a spiritual plane you're, you'll you're get it back you'll get it back for sure yeah get it's it coming yeah. back and i was going to say that the witches thing the way that they're traditionally um portrayed is with like a crooked nose and a bent hat and warts all over their face and that's not necessarily how women are because women are essentially what they would label as witches but the witches that were into the black magic, the ones that were being hired by the elites or being forced by the elites to cast dark, evil spells on other people, that's eventually like it corrodes yourself and you end up broken, disabled, like the traditional character of a witch, which not all women that are messing around with spells are like that, but but that's that's where that comes from. I mean, effectively, aren't we all 
casting spells? Yeah, that's the thing. Is we're doing this whether we're aware of it or not. So if you're getting angry at other people, then you're just going to get more of that. That's, that's the whole thing with manifestation. I love the word abracadabra. With my words, I create. Yeah. I heard you talk about that before. Yeah. Um, and it's happening instantaneously. And it's, it's the words, it's the thoughts. A lot of us don't realize that the thoughts that we're having, even though we don't physically say it, they're programming our body, they're programming ourselves, they're programming our reality and our perception of reality. So the person that we need to develop an awareness most is with ourself. I was speaking earlier of like being able to put my consciousness into other people. That, that only happens if we're able to do that in the different aspects of ourself, because there's a large portion of ourself that's trying to protect us. There's a, so there's the positive mind and the negative mind. If we imagine we're standing at a street, the positive mind is going to tell us to cross the street because of what's on the other side. The negative mind is going to tell us not to cross the street because we're going to get hit by a car. And so both have a purpose, right? The negative mind is, is, is wanting to stay safe, wanting to protect us. Positive mind just wants to be okay with everything. And then there's the neutral mind, which is going to be in the experience of what you actually do. And we can't, we got to make sure that we're balanced in there. We're not just like fearing everything. Um, and we're also not just like okay with everything because the way that we're designed, we have many different aspects of ourself that are all working to keep this unit safe, healthy, happy. And are we able to communicate, relate with all the different aspects of self? Because if we are, then it makes it easier to communicate, relate with others. So somebody uh, you know, said something about negative and positive, but I want to say that <clears throat> negative and positive doesn't mean good or bad. It's just negative and positive. Like you can't have light without darkness. Everybody wants peace, love, and light, but that doesn't exist without darkness. Like light's the new kid on the block. Darkness has been around forever. Nights, light is uh, recent. Like it's it's a high schooler. Right. If you look into physics and you look into different modalities, you'll notice that positive means to penetrate. Right. So masculine is associated with positive. Masculine energy penetrates, it goes into things. Negative is receptive, right? Feminine, right? Just think of the sexual organs, penetration versus receiving. And so feminine is negative, darkness is negative. Why is darkness negative? Because there's a void. It's, it's, that's where things manifest from as well. So back to feminine, the, we create from the darkness. Now, why is there association? Why do we feel positive? is good and negative is bad. The, the association with that is because if you're giving out a lot, that's, that's looked at as good. If you're too negative, that means that you're receiving too much. You're taking, you're taking, 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 taking. And that's where you're like a black hole that's just sucking everything in. So a balance between positive and negative is, is just, it is. But the, what, the reason why we um, perceive positive as good and negative as bad is because negative means to, to receive and positive means to give. And we associate that with good and bad. Yeah. That's my so, thinking on it. Well, that, I mean, that, I mean that, that is, no, that's 100% true. <clears throat> so we, we have, we have the, all of these belief systems that we have in society about what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad. And that's how we started off. We started off talking about urine therapy because some people think it's right and some people think it's wrong to the point where they're like, I love everything you do, but if you're going to talk about this, I'm leaving. And I'm like, well, then you don't love everything that I do. <laughs> you love, that means that you have a condition in what you love. And that's that word, but. I love everything you do, but if you use that word, but, it essentially means that you just crossed off the first part. Yeah, right? it means that they just negated themselves, and we also that's another word, right? The difference between but and, and the and the word and. I love everything you do, and this makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Talking about urine therapy would be a more like 
that would allow them to also still love everything that you do if they just change that one word. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think it's um I you know these are things that I know that you that you've been you've grown up with and I've grown up with and I've implemented in my life. And I you know here's what here's one thing that happened for me. I had all this correct language and behaviors when it came to business. And then I'd go home and I was just a shitty potty mouth uh neggy pot. And I that, caught myself, like someone actually mentioned it to me. You're just being, why are you always so negative? I'm not on negative. I'm always positive. I'm almost always positive. I'm like, because I'm almost always doing business. But I was so positive there without any openness for negativity that I wouldn't receive anything. I would just be driving, driving, driving. So when I got home, I had to have a balance somewhere in my life. The Libra in me needed to balance. By the way, I'm a Grandmaster Libra in, in, in Mars, in my action. So I'm a 24 degree Libra in action. So, so that, in action. So, yeah. That's so why you're good explaining things too. Yeah, I mean, so I'd go home and I'd be really negative to try and counterbalance all the positivity I'd been all day. It took me a while to figure that out. So, so my, my answer was to accept and receive more throughout the day so that I could, so that I could give more at night because I was giving all my energy all day long to be positive, to help people, to believe in themselves. And what it materialized in my stomach, I show you a video of my fat, my fat suit. And, and right around here, which is the stomach, stomach is right here, liver is right here. So I, I had contraction around that area of my rib cage and my lats would pop out my belly and my, my love handles popped out. I remember that. Yeah, so so that was that was because I was giving all day positive. And I was giving to people who weren't who weren't positive enough themselves. So I was trying to use my belief to help them get over their disbelief. And the solar plexus is where you you give out from. Yes. Like that's what gets you up in in, in in doing that action. So that was out of balance. Yeah. Essentially that's where all the energy was getting stuck yeah yeah and, and and by the way i'm just now clearing that up after after actively working on this for five and a half almost six years i'm just now getting to the point where it's all letting go and 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 i'm i'm diligent at it but i the way that it came into my life was was if i'm having to convince people constantly then I'm talking to the wrong people because if I'm doing that, I'm going to go home to the ones that I love and I'm going to be negative. Right. There's no way that that energy has to balance or it's going to stay in my body cause disease. Is that what you just went over right now is, is I think something that a lot of people are dealing with and they have no awareness of. Correct all day long they're being the perfect human being and then they go home and they can't understand why they're arguing with their partner having these blow up arguments over the things that don't matter and it's because of the energy it's the energy uh, it's just unbalanced and you're you're pulling it all back in when you go home yeah you know the another thing too is before the average person had we had cars because if you go back even 50 years ago, the majority of people didn't drive in cars. Today, a family of four has got three cars quite often. So we, uh, before that, there was a lot more domestic abuse before road rage. Road, road rage took out the energy, so by the time I got home, I'm not beating up my partner. Road rage is something, I, I took me years to get over road rage, but that, is another because i used to be like baffled of like why why how is it that i'm like cussing and swearing and yelling in my car at another person like it does it doesn't make sense it doesn't feel like <laughs> me um because the yeah. energy energy is looking for a place to get out it's like it, right. it wants your body naturally wants to rebalance but we have these rules that say i can't be like this i have to be positive i have to be and if i don't allow myself a time to just be negative 
or to receive is another way to say it like you said is to just receive if i don't allow that space at some point in my in my day it's going to come out in places where i don't want so it's better to have a little balance throughout the day and that's not that's that's also why we we tell jokes that's why humor is there because humor humor pokes fun at society especially a lot of humor does that's amazing you know it took me I'm glad that you said something about the five year thing, the five, six year thing. It took me about three years to get over road rage. Um, Cause one day I just decided like, Hey, this, why am I doing this? Let's, I didn't know all this stuff that you're talking about now, but it was just like, I want to get over this. It took three years. First I was, I, I disciplined myself to not say it. And then that was about a year to not just let it like spew out of my mouth, but I was still thinking it. And then it was like, okay, how, how do I like get over these gymnastics? Like, how do I figure out the equation of not thinking it and then eventually not feeling it? And right now I'm, com I'm completely fine no matter what anybody does on, on the road, but it took years. And that's what, that's what I, I hope everybody gets is that you don't just like make, like make changes in character that happen in a couple of weeks. You don't just get to go to a self-development seminar and then like walk out and you're just, you know, a different person. People that you watch that are, that have the characteristics that you are going towards, they worked on it for years, decades. They've been through things that contribute to their success. And you know why, you know why I follow uh, Chris Vitecki? Well, I mean, I follow him because he's a damn good astrologer and he created a system and he's got a great app, but the uh, the idea behind it is he developed a step system or channeled a step system. And the first is, uh, number one is love, two is feel, three is belief. And, and, you know, if I make a major change in my life, I need to see that change to all 12 archetypes of, of time, which is all, all 12, like Cancer, Sagittarius, whatever. So I have to see it through there. That's why one year, I say, I love, I, I, I don't love this. So I love doing this. So I'm making a new decision and I'm, and this is my decision. I'm going to not speak it year two, you feel now it's the feeling it through that whole cycle. Year three is the belief. And on the beginning of the third year, now you have a, a new form belief that's not shooken by a space or time or somebody. Cause I can change my belief for a month or three months or six months. But when that belief sits in there for the third year, and that's also why, you know, in our recent, um, our recent medical deluge, that's also why they kept us one year, two years, and then the third year we were still restricted by our beliefs. We didn't leave our country. We didn't travel because we had that feeling of restriction. That's actually why they did it that way. It's crazy, the program. I mean, those of us that didn't watch TV weren't programmed into any of that, like literally none of that. And, and we just continued, like life just went on. Even if we, we got some symptoms, it's okay. Like we have an immune system for that. It's just, they took the flu and like made it into this thing that was able to control the entire world and shift a lot of the currency into the hands of these mega corps. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, there's, there's many different reasons that that could have happened, uh, but I'm sure everybody yeah, gonna love that. If you got road rage, uh, gave somebody a middle finger, they followed her home with a gun in the back window. <laughs> yeah. Could have just as easily blowing them a kiss and you would have been on your way happy and they would have been laughing. Yeah. You know, it, and that, that is, that is actually funny. It's, it's, and I, I am learning this. It's to return anger with kindness. And, and that has been, I mean, my makeup of my architecture to do what I've done in my life is to have this attitude and put my head down and run through a wall. And, and I, at this stage of my life now, I'm coming into my, we call it my mid heaven, which my mid heaven is of all things to be a spiritual teacher. And I'm like, I never, I never understood what that, I now know what that means, right? And it's to, it's to create this space and opportunity. But I, but I, 
the reason why I can do this is because I did put my fingers up and put my head down and go through every wall. Right. You understand that perspective. You learned from that uh, enough. Yeah. Now it's on. To the, <laughs> it's letting go of that lesson and and on to the next. I was gonna say something, but I forget. There's a. Uh, yeah, completely. I had something to say, but it, it lost. It, it got oh, oh. Yeah, so we are all on a progression, right? And you just said that you were doing this in your younger years, and now you're in this other zone. A, a lot of people, when they're, you know, most of their life, they've been just, uh, dot, no. they've been willing to contribute to others, let's say, too much. And now, in their older years, they're standing their ground more. They're learning to say no, right? There's a lot of people that don't know how to say no, but they're, they're coming into a phase of life where they're, they're being more of a prick. And we get to recognize that everybody's going through their own progression. And it's not necessarily the same flow that you're going through. But if we can see that in other people is that they're in a progression. And right now their actions are because of the, phase that they're in and it makes it so that we don't have to hate somebody forever and then we can actually like see them as a progress just like we're a progress because i see people that could make me angry if i don't if but i can see that like oh yeah i remember i remember when that was important to me and i remember when i did that to other people and so like i can see myself in that yeah. person yeah you know that's uh, that's actually the that's actually where I, we started off. It was really about polarization, and the key to to making polarization a positive experience is to see myself in that other person, because polarization is this is this splitting sides. And if I and if I can polarize in the right way, and that's what I love about what you do. You polarize, um, and uh, and I polarize. We do it slightly differently, but it's it's to get people to think of both sides. And that's what we really want. We want, and I was saying uh, earlier to, the, to my team, I was saying, I don't want, I want the conversation. <clears throat> I don't want to shut down a conversation. I, I want the conversation. I want people to be negative. I want people to be angry and frustrated because they're talking. And, and if they're expressing their anger to us and we've got big enough shoulders to take it, guess what? That's helping them heal. Mm-hmm. Healing is not just putting my hands on people. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's part of the, the, the choice that that human garage made as well is yeah. to be is to be that rock yeah. that people can unload on a little bit. Yeah, we get it sometimes. <laughs> and also, um, as as I don't know if teacher is the right word here, but I'll just use it for lack of a better word. But as teachers, we, we draw in the, 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 the opposite of us, right? Like we yes. draw in the, the problems yes. because if we're setting ourselves out to be a problem solver or a resolver, then that's, we're going to attract the, the energy that is going to be attracted to that. And it's, it's, it's the opposite of us. Like if you, you're, I was that you share, you, you, you share through embodiment. That's the ultimate teaching. Cause if I teach about something that I know nothing about, I'm not truly conveying the proper message. You embody it. You want, you go and you do it. So, so teacher is the word teacher, the way we use it, it I don't think is really fit because it used to be, I would go do something, bring you in as an apprentice and show you what I did. So I embodied it. Right. Yeah. That whole dynamic's shifting as well. As we come into like the age of the Aquarius, yeah. it's, it's less about like disciple, student, teacher, or guru, disciple, teacher, student, even parent, child. It's like, it's everything's coming on a more even and then like, cyclical learning through each other like the more experience is going to learn from the less experience and it's it's like a new birth 
that's happening in the learning and teaching space. Classrooms, for instance, are starting to hopefully put their chairs in a circle as opposed to everybody's looking in one direction at the student, at the teacher, and nobody has anything to learn from other people. Yeah. That's just putting people into a circle dramatically shifts the environment of, of a, of a learning system. Well, Ra, it's been a fantastic conversation today. Um, I always love the topics because I can literally talk for another hour. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Super amazing. Glad you're over there. I'm, it's... I might see you guys in Vancouver. I'm still trying to make that, that happen. Ooh, let us know. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Yeah. That would be so awesome. Cause it's in like two weeks, right? Something December. Yeah. yeah the 16th. 13th? 16th. 16th. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just let, let us know if, if you're coming, I, I got, uh, uh, I'd like you to do what you did again in uh, Josh. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Hey, buddy. Take, take care everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. See you rock.